281 fixes, better performance, improved orbital maneuvering. Well, this first patch does look promising. Let's dive into it. Hello everybody and welcome. On March 16th, the developers of Kerbal Space Program 2 released a massive patch to improve the early access experience. In this video, I will talk about five key takeaways from this update and what we as fans of the space game franchise can expect going forward. Before I get to these five items, a quick refresher why this patch was so important. To make it very short, KSP2 in its released state was in dire need of improvement. Performance was subpar and game-breaking bugs were rampant. Yes, with an early access title you have to expect it to be rough around the edges. And through feedback of the players, the developers have the chance to adjust the priorities of development to make the game better as if it were done in a black box. But there were so many issues that people weren't even able to play enough to give proper feedback. They just gave up and refunded it. So let's start with one of the most talked about issues people had. Performance. Let's make this quick. It's noticeably better now. The game was rather limping along on most players' systems because it wasn't optimized well at release. The patch notes include a few performance improvements and from what people have shared online, it appears to have worked, especially with systems closer at the minimum requirements end of things. What's interesting to note here is that the developers have managed to make performance more predictable, if this makes any sense. Basically, it appears that while not yet super smooth, even on my RTX 3090, the frame rate feels a lot more consistent now than before. Unfortunately, I don't have any way to really quantify this, because I'm not equipped for thorough testing and that type of thing. So, if you have KSP2 and have installed the new patch, what is your experience in the performance department? Let me know your system specs and your experience with the new patch compared to the initial release in the comments down below or over on my Discord server, link is in the description. Having the game not come to a screeching halt when flying complex vehicles is definitely a bonus. But for me personally, there was a set of improvements that was even more important and have made playing Kerbal Space Program 2 a lot easier. And those concern Orbital maneuvering. Once you manage to get out of the atmosphere and into orbit, you will have to rely heavily on the map view to get to a moon or another planet. And in the initial release version, that left a lot to be desired. The maneuver gizmo, the little tool you use to create your maneuver plan, was a bit wonky. The game would not show trajectories within the sphere of influence of another moon or planet. You couldn't pin important information and adjust your maneuver plan at the same time. And quite a few other issues. But now with patch 1, there are a lot of good improvements here. Let's start with the centerpiece, the maneuver gizmo. It looks different now and offers bigger handles that make it easier to manipulate your maneuver plan before you start your burn. And we can also lock some orbital information while manipulating the node. The game also tells you that this item is locked by displaying a padlock symbol. And yes, we now have the trajectory plotted inside the sphere of influence of another body. Which should have been there right from the start if we're being honest. And I think we're also missing the periaps displayed there, so we actually know how high we are when we look at the body directly. But yeah, this game is not finished yet, as all of you know. But this was just one of many fixes that are included in patch 1. How many, you ask? 281 fixes! Yep, this patch is huge! The patch notes are quite a thing to behold. I counted 281 total changes documented, not counting edit translations. 59 of these changes were made in UI UX, 50 in flight and map, 30 in parts and stock vessels, 37 in environments, 19 in FX and audio, 17 in tutorials, 15 in EVA, 14 in construction, 7 in localization and 6 in saving and loading. 
I'm not going to read all of them, so if you want to learn more, please head over to the KSP forums where the complete list was posted. I will put a link down there in the video description. Some notable things there are the items marked with a rocket symbol. Those are fixes that were made possible through the help of the community, all the people who purchased the game in early access and have contributed bug reports to the developers. These items amount to 15% of all fixes in this patch, meaning we as fans of KSP have already been able to improve the game by contributing our feedback. To me this shows how important it is that we keep at it and stay in dialogue with the developers for the upcoming developments. Speaking of those, patch 2. While patch 1 has fixed a lot of issues in Kerbal Space Program 2, the game is far from flawless. But we can expect the next patch to be released in the next couple of weeks. 3, 4, 5, not sure yet. There are already some issues in the pipeline, including a new one that popped up with patch 1. When you press F2 to hide the user interface, for instance to take a nice screenshot, the time warp indicator stays visible. That's something you would call a regression in software development, an issue that breaks something that has already worked well before. And this is why I said in a previous video I am glad they didn't rush a patch out the day after the release of KSP2 Early Access. Making sure your software is stable and doesn't make things worse is crucial before you get it to your customers. So while patch 1 repairs a lot of what was broken, let's keep our eyes open for new bugs that might have been caused by a fix for another one. Testing video games for regressions is a pretty time-intensive task since games are incredibly complex pieces of software that enables players to complete a variety of tasks using a multitude of different ways. Catching every eventuality is extremely hard. So let's make sure you report these issues if you find them. A guide how to do that is at the bottom of the patch notes. If you really want to provide great material for KSP2's QA team, there is a tool that can help. For this, I joined forces with the legend himself, the mod father Linux Guru Gamer, who maintains 280 mods for KSP1. We created the KSP2 bug packager. It puts your log files, a safe game of your choice and also, if desired, a workspace into a zip file that you can send along with your bug report. This will make it easier for the developers to reproduce the issues you encountered. The command line tool is based on Windows PowerShell and you can get it from the KSP forums page, link is again down in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions around that, just write a comment on that forum thread. And now there's only one more takeaway from the KSP2 patch 1 release I want to talk about. Realistic expectations. If you remember my interview I did with creative director Nate Simpson, he said that they take early access very seriously. He also said we can expect updates every couple of weeks after the initial release. Both of these statements have been proven true with patch 1. We had a multitude of fixes that were implemented thanks to input from the community and the patch came within weeks of the first release. And the priority of the fixes was tuned to fit the feedback from the players, especially regarding the performance of KSP2. After the troubled initial release, this update did a lot to restore the community's faith in the development team. And it made a lot more people realize what I also said in the video including Nate's interview. The developers knew how bad the released version was, because this amount of fixes cannot be done within just three weeks. At least I don't believe it could be. A lot of them must have been ready or almost ready before the release. And this is why I don't think patch 2 will contain as many fixes as the first one and that we need to keep our expectations at the realistic level. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be quite a few bugs resolved because many of them are still in the game, even after that monster of a first patch. But I would be very surprised if the amount will rival the 281 changes introduced in patch 1. And re-entry heating will not yet be in patch 2. Nate Simpson has posted a work in progress image for the heating uh, over on the KSP forums. And it is lit on fire! Yeah, do, do people still say that? Yeah, I'm old. I mean, look at all that gray hair.
Personally, I think the image that Nate shared looks great already, but whether this feature will be in patch 3 or 4, that's yet unknown, maybe even later. But it appears that the team has a full backlog for the second fix and we will probably see that released in a few weeks. Maybe in the first or second week of April, if the timeline so far is any indication. But hey, that's just speculation on my part, since there is no official date set yet. To close out, I want to come back to something I said in my initial impressions video published on release day of Early Access. Kerbal Space Program 2 is a diamond in the rough. And there was an incredible amount of rough around it at launch. Uh, that has been chipped away a little bit, but it is still a long way until we can really enjoy its full potential. But I at least can see that potential lying there and I hope the developers get enough time and resources to unearth it. What we've also seen are quite a few UI changes compared to the release version of Early Access. And I was told by the developers that UI is something that is very much in flux and will change a lot over the next couple of months based on all of our feedback. So. Keep providing that if you want to see things changed. I know that patch 1 was the developer's chance to prove that they can deliver on the feedback received by the community. And judging from the reactions in the forums, on Reddit and also on Steam reviews, it appears it worked. Let's hope they manage to stay on this trajectory. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.